This is IAT 814 Visual Analytics. Lecture 3, in which we're talking about statistics. A brief outline is that first we'll give a very brief overview of what statistics is about, and then we'll talk about medi mean, median, and mode, or giving a sense of what the, how to, uh, the average of a set of data is. Next, we'll talk about frequency tables and histograms, and then we'll talk about distribution and dispersion, and finally, scatter plots. So first, let's just talk about a brief overview of statistics and the mean or median or mode to describe what's going on in, a, in some data. So statistics is the science of collecting and analyzing numerical data in large quantities, especially for the purposes of inferring proportions of a, in a whole from those of a representative sample. It's a little bit similar to visual analytics. For this course, we'll really focus on descriptive statistics, and we won't really delve into um, other as aspects of uh, the statistical work, which talk about sampling and inferring proportions in a whole from a sample of a collection of data about a huge amount of data. So the basic statistical operations that uh, you should be aware of is first, descriptive statistics, and those are used to describe the distribution of a single variable or the relationship between two variables, or perhaps more variables, but we're just going to talk about a one variable or two in this lecture series. The other thing that st statisticians uh, do is they uh, are interested in inferential statistics, and the purpose of inferential statistics is used to establish relationships among variables. So you've got a bunch of data which have a bunch of variables and the real thing that the data is about is much bigger than the amount of data that you've actually collected. So usually what happens is the data you have is a sample of a much bigger collection of information. And there's usually the assumption that that big collection of data has some kind of distribution which is called the normal distribution. That is to say, it looks in a way we'll show you later on in the, in, the, uh, in the lecture series. So the data may be a sample of the whole set of data, and the questions that statisticians are interested in pursuing are things like building techniques about how to infer things from that sample, how to correctly sample the information, how to make sure that the sample properly represents what's going on in, in the real life uh, phenomena of interest, and how we can use that small sample to properly understand uh, what's going on inside that real world um, data collection or that real world phenomenon. But what we're going to do now is focus on the simplest end of this thing, um, and that is descriptive statistics. So the simplest descriptive is the minimum and the maximum and the range. So we have here in our slide a very simple little data set with these numbers ranging from 45, as is highlighted in red, to 100. And, you know, they are integer numbers in this list. And range is simply the difference between the minimum and maximum values. And clearly, we've already identified what the minimum and maximum values are here by highlighting them in red. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over to uh, our Excel spreadsheet, um, which I which has the same data. You can see it's the same, 73, 66, 69, blah, 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 all the way, uh, all the way to 100. 100 just happens to be the last one in the, in the list. And there's 45 there. So Excel contains functions that enables you to, um, to identify the minimum and maximum. And no surprise, the name of the function to discover the minimum of a set of data is min. And here is the formula that I've typed into this cell. I'll do it again, just so you can see it happening. So the way Excel works, if you're not familiar, is you type equals to indicate that there is a formula coming. You state the formula name, function name, min in this case, and then within parentheses, you state the range of values that you want to compute. Um, so min, what it does is computes, finds the minimum value in a, a collection of numbers. In this example, we've just shown uh, min, uh, the collection of numbers that's in a column. There could be any number of columns in this range 
here. I've just used column B and that's where the numbers are. Maximum is the same and that's the maximum of the same collection of data. Given that we now know how to understand the minimum and the maximum and the range, let's now talk about what we casually call the average of a collection of data. You could see in the previous example that there were a number of numbers in the range from 45 to 100 and you'd kind of like to get an idea of of the col total collection what is the what is called the central tendency or you know the average as we say in quotes here. Another thing that we tend to be interested in uh, in a data collection is the spread of that information. And underlying this is the assumption that there's some real thing going on and we would like to get a sense of, of a very simple description of that real thing. Say a single number that is the central idea of what's happening in that collection. So for average, using the lay term, there are three well understood measures as to what that, how that can be computed. The first is mean, next is median, and finally, mode. And we'll talk about these now. So, measures of centrality allow us to summarize a data set based on some central tendency. And some pictures that we'll talk about in the next le lecture segment following this one, we'll, talk, we'll show pictures of what that means. The general term average, which I'm putting in quotes, has a practical and statistical meaning, which is called the mean. And what is the mean? It's the sum of all values divided by the number of values in the data set. And it is one measure of the central location in the data set. And here we see that uh, data collection from the previous slide, from uh, uh, slide number five, 7366. And we've just simply added all those numbers together and divided by the number of numbers to get a value 68.6. If we go to our Excel spreadsheet, here's the same slide again, the same set of numbers, and what I've uh, done is I've computed the mean. And that is, uh, in Excel, it's the name of the function is average, just basically so that we can use the common terminology. The uh, argument to that uh, function call is, once again, the range of values. And it is computed for us, sorry, it is computed for us the value 68.6. So what the average does for you is it gives a, a, a good sense of uh, what the central value is. Now, what I'd like you to do is to think about when might you not want to use the mean? I'll give you a couple of seconds to think that through. Okay. One of the drawbacks of the mean is that it is vulnerable to certain types of problems. So here we have a visual representation of a couple of very small data collections. And in this one, and in this one, the mean computes to 4.8. And in so this one, we see values ranging from 0 0.5, roughly 1, 2.5, etc., up to roughly 9. And uh, they seem to be kind of distributed with roughly equal spacing. And it's roughly symmetrical around the point of the mean. There's as many point, roughly as many points to the left as to the right. There's a seven, point, uh, uh, seven points on this uh, line, and there are four to the right and three to the left. This one here also computes the same value. There are two values very close to zero, and a number of uh, five more values uh, which are just uh, above the mean value. And the mean is the same in both of these things. And one of the things that we'll use throughout this lecture series through le uh, lecture three is examples of uh, distributions of data, of locations of data that compute the same value, even though the way in which the data is organized is somewhat different. So one of the drawbacks of mean is that it can be um, uh, uh, influenced strongly by values that lie at extremes of the range, either very large or very small. And in this instance, even though there's a tight grouping of uh, data between four and roughly seven, these two values that are close to zero have that mean kind of at the leftmost part of this uh, five element cluster here.
So a way to uh, deal with that uh, problem or concern is to compute a different value, and that is called the median. So what is the median? The median is the middle value in a sorted data set. Half the values are greater, and half the values in the list are less than the median. And so what it does is instead of actually adding, taking the values and adding them up, the computational method is to sort these values and pick the middle one, or if there's an even number of values in the list as there are here, pick the middle two and take the average of those two, take the mean of those two. So here in our Excel spreadsheet, uh, I now have median um, uh, identified here, and the Excel call as you can see here is equals median and I have a, the same values here but they've been sorted and I've identified in red 67 and 69 as being the two middle values and you can see that by looking that yes these are in sorted order from uh, smallest to largest and item 10 and item 11 are the two middle ones because there's 20 items in the list and 68 and 69 take the mean of that that yields 68 and that's the median value on the slides we have another um, uh, another tiny data set, one, two, four, seven, eight, nine, nine, seven is the median value, and I've highlighted it once again in red. So the mean median may or may not be close to the mean. That is to say, part of the reason why we're interested in it is because the median sometimes gives different values than the mean. And part of the reason why this is interesting is we know by definition that the median is the middle value in the sequence of values in the data set. And if the mean and the median are significantly different from each other, different by a large enough factor considering, considering the entire range of values in the data collection, the combination of median and, and mean can be used to define if there's some kind of skewness or one-sidedness to the distribution. And you can see in this little data set here, there is a certain amount of skewness in the data. We have these two values comparatively far off to the left and a small cluster, cluster of four uh, uh, in this case to, um, to uh, at the median point and off to the right. So the density of values here is much higher than the density of values, certainly around this range. And um, computing the median and computing the mean and finding out if they're close to each other or far apart from each other, just simply numerically, gives us an indication that there might be something interesting happening with the data collection. Finally, the last measure of centrality is something called the mode. And what that is, is the most frequently occurring value in the data collection. Now that seems a little bit funky. Um, and part of the reason why you might use it is that it might be that instead of numeric values, as we are as we're showing here, it's a, a, a nominal data set that you might run the mode on. But you can compute the mode on any data collection, and we'll just compute it on the data collection we've been showing here. And so once again, here it is, it not in sorted order, the same 20 items in the list. And there's two occurrences of the number 74, so therefore the mode... Is 74. For numerical data, um, it's generally not all that meaningful unless uh, a large uh, percentage of the values are the same value. Um, and so for numerical things, particularly if they are real numbers, we're just looking at integers here, the mode probably isn't too useful uh, a thing to compute. But it is useful for nominal or categorical data. So for example, the most common social media tool used by students is Facebook, uh, that is a suggestion of a computation that uh, would be done by, by computing the mode, the most common something or other. There might be a whole bunch of me uh, social media tools, uh, but there's a finite and comparatively small number of them compared to the infinite amount of numbers, say, in the integers or in the real numbers. So what, in using mode for categorical frequency, typically what you would do is you'd have, say, a bar chart, which is measuring the number of items in a particular category or the number of items 
uh, of nominal data. So here's the car name, how many times that appears, it's roughly seven. Train is roughly five. Uh, bus is roughly 12 or 13 here, and tram is, uh, again, roughly five. So the mode of this data set is bus because there is the bus occurs 13 times and that's the largest number of occurrences of, uh, of, of any of these data values, car, train, bus, and tram. So when do we use what? Well, it's dependent largely on how data are distributed. Note that if mean equals the median, which in turn equals the mode, and we'll show how that might be the case this last part in a bit, then the data are said to be symmetrical. However, a rule of thumb is you use the mean if the data are normally distributed, for, we'll define that more later on, and the variance is within some small range. And we use median to reduce the effects of outliers. So here we're showing a data set, and this is done using a histogram, which we'll talk about later on in this lecture series. And the mean and the median are separated by, you know, a, a, a modest amount. So, and you can see that what the bars are doing is counting up the number of items within these small ranges. And we have non-overlapping ranges here. You can see that this peak occurs further to the left of the median, which in turn occurs further left than the mean. And so what this is is a data set that is skewed to the left. And mode is here, median is here, and mean is there. And that indicates that, mean, uh, that the mean itself is not really telling you exactly what you need to know about what's going on in this data set. So in summary, given the type of variable you should select the, uh, the centrality measure, the measure of central tendency, according to what kind of data that you've got. For nominal data, that is to say names or categories, the best measure of central, central tendency to use is the mode, because you, typically you would expect a limited vocabulary of names in your nominal data set. And you, you know, to pick the, the, the favorite, the most common thing, you choose the mode, because that's exactly what the mode does. For ordinal data, um, you are in good shape if you choose the median. So that could be data that you can, remember that's data that you can put in order, but you can't do computations on. You can't divide some value by something and get something meaningful from ordinal data. If you have interval or ratio data, you can compute the mean, and of course you can compute the median, but if the data are skewed that is to say, kind of one-sided or the other, the median is probably the best value to use. Whereas if the um, distribution of data is symmetric, you're going to do well by computing the mean. All righty, so that ends the lecture segment 3.1, which has been about statistics overview plus mean, median, and mode.